All right, I'm gonna try to make this a quick intro because this pattern you're about to see has been kicking my tail for at least the last couple of hours. Hello everybody, welcome back. I'm Matt, thanks for stopping by. So this pattern you're about to see, it's been on my to-do list for several months now. Now there's nothing really special about it, but it does have a technique that I'd never tried before and I'd been wanting to try. Now the pattern is called a coffin fly. Now you don't have to tie it with an extended body like I'm about to do, and some of the patterns have a foam extended body for it, but I wanted to do it with a bugtail, partly because it's just challenging and partly because I'd never done it before. Now I do tie a dragonfly with an extended body like this made out of foam, and what I learned today is that doing it with bucktail really is a lot harder. Now I'm not sure if I would recommend this pattern to a beginner. I'm fairly seasoned and this thing was pretty challenging for me. But what you might learn is just a new technique. If you've never tied an extended body out of bucktail, well, you'll see how to do that here. Now what you're about to see, it's far from a perfect fly. I made all kinds of mistakes in this, but you will get the general gist of how to do a, a body like this. Now if any of you have tied a pattern with this technique, please leave us some comments. Let us know what some tips and tricks are on how to do it better. Now it really was an interesting pattern, and while it was a bit challenging, it was still kind of fun. So I hope you all like it. So there it is in the vise, a coffin fly. Now that is a an extended body out of bucktail and then grizzly hackle tips for the spent wings. First thing we're gonna do, you really have to tie this in two parts. We make the extended body first and you'll wanna put a hook in there, not a hook, a, a needle. And this isn't a real strong needle, so this does make it a little bit more challenging. Let me center this just a little bit. And I'm gonna use a white thread because I'm using a white bucktail for the body. You don't necessarily need to match the thread to the body. I think it does make it look a little bit better. And so you've gotta be a little bit careful wrapping this on because this hook, I'm or the needle, it's not real strong. And if I just pull down on it to, you know, get some more thread out of my bobbin, I might bend that needle. So you do have to be a little bit careful right there. And you don't necessarily have to match your thread to the, the bucktail that you're using. If you didn't, I mean, you're just gonna end up with something maybe like this right here where you'll be able to, to see the ribs. But I want to kinda hide them, so I'm gonna use white thread and then a white bucktail. Now the first thing we're gonna catch in for the tail, peccary hair three of these hairs right here. Now, if you don't have a peccary, eh, don't worry about it. Just use, I guess, elk or moose, some kind of dark body hair. But I think these are kind of cool. They're really coarse, really thick. And let's just catch them in. Several wraps right here. We're not putting any wraps real tight because we are gonna have to slide this off. But before I go too far ahead, I'm gonna put a, a whip finish on it. So let's go three turns right here. I just found that that makes it a little bit easier when we're trying to pull it off without it, you know, it'll keep it from getting all bunched up on you. So I am gonna trim these about the length that I'm gonna make my body. So we'll go about right there. And what I'll do, I'll just put some loose wraps right here, not tight at all, but I'm just kinda trying to bind that, those hairs in a little bit and then take it right back up, up front here, or really the back end of it. Now, the next thing we're gonna catch in, it's a fairly significant chunk of bucktail. And this, I'm just using a, a standard bucktail right here and using the white hairs on the side. So I'm, you might want to try to pull some of the short hairs out, like grab it closer to the tips and then you can just do that right there. But it's not really that important because we're going to snip off the back as well. So have the uh, tips of the, the hairs pointing toward your vise. And we're just going to catch this in right up here. And you can't use real tight wraps, but at the same time, you don't want them to be too loose. So I'm going to let them spin all the way around the hook or the all the way around the needle right there and maybe another medium wrap right here. But what I've found, you kind of need another whip finish right here. Maybe you could get away with 
a couple of half hitches, but my wet finish tool is not long enough, so I have to kind of do this with my fingers right here. Let's see, that's two turns. Let's see if we can get three on here. Okay, and I did. Now I'm gonna pull that fairly tight, but not so snug that it's gonna really bind it to that needle. Now before we move on, I'm gonna just go ahead and gather all these, the tips of this bucktail, and I'm gonna cut it off about as long as I want my body to be. So I think right there is gonna be fine. And I'll do the same thing I did with those peccary hairs. Just put some loose wraps down right here to just kind of help me build out my underbody. And then take it right back up. Not gonna take it all the way up front, just a couple millimeters behind, because that's gonna be where our first segment is. So I'm gonna grab all these and just pull them around. Try not to grab the, the peccary fibers, but just your bucktail. Okay, I've got a couple of them right there. I'm gonna have to take my bodkin and just pull that one out. There we go. Okay, now I've got all that bucktail pulled back. It almost looks like a Thunder Creek head, but it's not, it's a, a body. Now I'm gonna put two wraps, medium tight right there, and I am gonna do a half hitch or, you know, a a single turn whip finish right here just so that that thread won't slip on me. So I'm pushing that a little bit tight, not real tight, but tight enough that I don't think that is gonna move on me. So the next thing we wanna do, just lift all these bucktail hairs up and then we're gonna take our thread, try to get them all. Let's see, I got one that doesn't want to cooperate. There it is. Now I'm going to move my thread underneath it and back whatever length I want that next segment to be. So then let them go around your hook again and we'll do the same thing. Two wraps right here, medium tight, and we'll do another little whip finish or a half hitch right here. And that just broke my thread. That's a pain in the butt. See, I tell you, this thing will kick your butt. So let's, we can recover from this. I'm not gonna start this video over because I have already spent too much time on this fly. So how do we fix that? Well, I think I'm gonna have to use a few extra wraps right here. So we're just gonna have a little bit of thicker segment right there. Okay, now we're gonna do the same thing, probably two more times, maybe three more times, depending on how long you want your body to be. But I'll speed this up so you don't have to watch me doing this next minute or so. Now when you get to your last one, go ahead and do a few tight wraps and then a full whip finish. So I'm gonna do a, a four turn whip finish right here at the back and then we'll see the moment of truth if this thing slides off like we want it to. Okay, so that's four turn right there. Go ahead and pull that pretty snug. Now we can snip our thread off right here. And let's see if this thing's gonna pull off. The easiest way I've found to do this just to grab it right here by the tip and then maybe somewhere in the middle and then just kind of wiggle it and slide it across like that. So there we go, that is our extended body. So let's go ahead and swap this needle out and then put your hook in. I'm tying this on a size 12. So it's a size 12, 1X long dry fly hook. And I'm gonna go ahead and 
change my thread, go back to the black. Since this is a coffin fly, you do have a black thorax and some grizzly hackle up front, so the black is going to look just right on this guy. So let's take our base down, not all the way to the start of the bend, but kind of close. So maybe the hook point, I think that's gonna work right there. Now one thing I've been doing before I tie in this body, I'm just splitting these peccary fibers a little bit right here, and then I'll put a small drop of super glue right there where the fibers are meeting that bucktail, just to try to help keep them split a little bit, and then to give it just a little bit more durability. Now before I catch this tail in, I went ahead and trimmed the front of it up a little bit, and I'm gonna catch it in right here at maybe that, this first wrap. And if I'm lucky, that will help, you know, keep the fly just a little bit more secure. And I'm, I've got a few tight wraps on it, but I'm putting some medium to medium tight wraps up here to really bind this piece in. And now I can go back, take it back to where I caught it in. And if I need to, you know, lift it up, prop it up, put a couple wraps underneath it. I'll show you what I'm talking about. I don't think I necessarily need to in this case, but if you want, you can put a couple wraps right there, which will help it to keep it from spinning. So I'm just going to try to smooth out this right here before I put my thorax on. And the thorax is just gonna be some black dry fly dubbing. So some kind of synthetic. I'm gonna use a black super fine. Put a little bit of wax on it right there. And then just enough black dubbing to cover the rest of that body too. A little bit behind the eye where we're gonna tie in some wings and a hackle. Okay, I think that is fat enough of a thorax. Now for the wings, we're gonna tie two grizzly saddle or grizzly hackle tips in, and I'm not gonna to get too fancy or too crazy here. I'm just gonna catch them in at the length I think I want them to be, which is pretty long. So three or four good wraps going back. Now I'll snip off the, the back piece right here. And I'm gonna just pull these out and put some figure eight wraps in between them to splay them out. Okay, those are coming out sideways well enough. Not perfect, but they're gonna be just fine. And we can kind of position them when we wrap this hackle. So let's take care of any of this excess right here. And this is one of the points a little while ago where I snipped my thread trying to do this. So take your time, be careful. Now let's just catch in our, our hackle. You know, one and a half size of the hook gap is about right. So let's just catch this in like we would any dry fly hackle right back behind the wings here with two or three securing wraps. And I'm probably going to wrap about three wraps of this hackle behind these wings and maybe one or two in front. Uh, I'd like to get two in front of them if I can, but if I don't have room, one will be fine. I got a stem right there I need to take care of. Okay, let's give it a shot and see how it turns out. Okay, that was four in, behind them. Now let's put a couple right in front of them. Or maybe we're only gonna get one in front of them. Because I'm starting to crowd my eye right there and I wanted to avoid that. So I'm gonna put two wraps to catch that hackle fiber off and my tail is sticking down on me. All right, it's getting a little messy up here, so what I'm gonna do before I trim that off, I'm gonna pull all the 
feathers, fibers back, and then just try to put a few wraps down right here and make some room for my whip finish. Doesn't need to be a big head, but I'm taking it far enough back where I can whip finish it, hopefully without trapping too many more fibers. Okay, let's take care of the cleanup. I've got this long hackle stem right here. I need to snip that off. And I've got at least one fiber sticking forward. So there we go. I think we're about done with this guy. Fish's view right there. We've got the spent wings and then you got the, the body. This body could have been a little bit tighter there in the back, but you know what? It'll still fish. So that's it, everybody. Pretty fun tie, not at all easy. You can see it started kicking my butt there many times. But I appreciate you watching. Y'all take care, and we'll see you next time.